Hebrew 7. This one, I think, uh, uh, keep my mouth shut. Hebrew 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Abraham went to battle, came back, ran into Melchizedek. And blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Okay, all the proceeds of the um, battle stuff they took, he gave him 10%. Uh, he gave a tenth part of all. First being translated king of righteousness. And then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed those who are of the sons of Levi... Who receive the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. I mean, they're men. But he who, whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witnessed that he lives. Even Levi, who receives tithes, pays tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under, and this is in quote in um, parentheses. For under it the people receive the law. I'll do that again. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he of whom those whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar for it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood and it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, there is another annulling of the former commandment because of its weaknesses and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with an oath by him who said to him, boy, that's a tell him, the Lord has sworn and will not relent, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. So we're kind of, it's, it's, the way they're comparing, comparing the, um, the, well, the old covenant to the new covenant, the law being under the law and all this sort of thing, and then what, what um, we're getting through Jesus. Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests because they were because they were prevented by death from continuing, but he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Okay. We can't lose that. He's a priest forever. Like he just says, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Okay. Once he did the deal and became king, becomes king, cannot be changed. And neither can the, the, his covenant. The covenant, the, it, cannot be, it cannot be messed up. He can't, he can't lose that. 
Let's see, because continues forever has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. He can save the worst of us. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Separate from sinners. That's what people always go back. Well, didn't he hang out with the tax collectors and the hookers? And well, he wasn't hanging out. He was preaching to them. Who does not, okay, separate from sinners and has become higher than the heavens. Who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did not. He, for, for this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Even even the, um, like I said back. I think the uh, priest had to do the same thing. If they you know followed up, they had to offer a sacrifice, a specific sacrifice for the thing they did cover their sin, and clean all that up. No more. For the law appoints as high priest men who have weaknesses, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the Son who has been perfected forever. He is our, our, um, he was our sacrifice. Whereas before they could have got a lamb or thing, depending on what they did, they had this item and you would sacrifice this at the altar and that would make you clean, blah, blah, blah. We don't do that because we have Jesus. See you tomorrow. Love you. God bless.